What's going on everybody? I'm Will Button. This is DevOps for Developers and you're wondering just how freaking long does it take to get a damn job around here anyway? Well, the truth is no one can really tell you that because there are a bunch of factors that are completely outside of your control in the job hunt process, right? But that doesn't mean that we're just going to throw our hands in the air and manifest thoughts and prayers and hope for the best. No. There's a couple different things that you can do that will not only help you shorten the cycle that it takes to get a job, but also they'll give you feedback to let you know where you're at in the process and how you're progressing. And at the same time, it's gonna help you build skills that you're actually gonna need once you land your first job anyway. And that's what we're gonna cover in this video. The job interview process is, or the job getting process is kind of like a sales funnel, right? So you put in a bunch of potential customers at the top, and then down at the bottom, you have the ones that turn into actual job offers. The different stages in between are applying for a job, making it past the phone screening, getting through however many levels of on-site or virtual technical interviews there are, and then finally the offer stage. And so each of those different sections in our funnel, we want to measure and see how we're doing and try to improve that. So the first thing you're going to do is actually create multiple copies of your resumes. And I don't mean like right click, save as, I mean like different formats of your resumes. Start with two different formats that are wildly different than each other, and then submit to jobs using those resumes. Right? You're going to want to treat, track this on a spreadsheet like the one that you see here and track which resume you used at which job. And then whenever you start to get responses to those resumes, you want to indicate that on the spreadsheet and see which resume performs better. Once you have a winner, then you want to try and modify that again to see if you can boost your conversion rate there. And this is a skill that you're actually going to use a lot in a tech career. It's very common that whenever we create a landing page or launch a new website, we'll launch multiple versions of it and then A-B test to see which ones resonate with our potential customers better. So we're just building skills that we're going to need anyway. The next stage is whenever you get to the phone screen. And for this phone screen, I want you to finish the phone screen and then document on your spreadsheet how you think you did. How did you do as far as answering the cultural questions, was it a cultural fit? How'd you do on the technical questions? Did you stumble or did you feel like you were strong whenever it came to talking about your background and your experience? And then you'll track which ones actually lead from a phone screen to a virtual or an on-site interview. And that's gonna give you feedback on your gut reaction and tell you where you're making mistakes or where you have the opportunities to improve in the phone screening process. Same thing for the different stages of technical interviews. At the end of the interview, track how you thought you did, where you thought you messed up. And it's okay if you think you messed up, just document it because while you might think that you messed up, maybe the interviewer didn't. And so that's good feedback to have whenever you're trying to refine and improve on your process. And then finally, that's gonna to lead to the offer stage. And once you get an offer, well, we're kind of done here, right? Sort of. If you don't get to an offer stage, at some point you're going to make it, you're going to reach the end of the interview process for that company and they're going to call or email you and say, hey, thanks, but we're moving forward with different candidates or whatever their exact wording is. You want to try to get some feedback from them. Just anything's going to be helpful here. You know, they might tell you some feedback, they might not. You can't really control that, so don't like be pushy. Try to get feedback if you can. Any data you get back is good. And then just compare that to the notes that you've been tracking. Now, the goal of all of this 
is to collect data and make data-driven decisions. And you want to try to improve the data and the your success ratio at each stage of the interview. And this is actually a skill that you're going to use all the time in your tech job, whether you're applying for a DevOps role or front-end engineering, back-end engineering, QA engineering, whatever it is, you're going to use this data-driven decision model over and over again. So it's really just helpful right now to start brushing up on those skills. You know, I already mentioned the A-B landing page or the A-B testing of the landing page. Other places this comes into play are when you're having performance issues with the server, you'll make a change and then you'll measure the response to determine whether the change was positive or negative. Incident management, you know, you've got a service that's out, you're gonna make changes to try to bring the service back up and again, use data and metrics to evaluate whether you're having a positive or negative impact. So this whole process of finding a job is actually an opportunity for you to build the skills that you're going to need to be successful in a tech career. And so in a way, like the job process itself, while it's not fun, is kind of like a proving ground to help you determine if this is the right career path for you. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, be sure and click like on the button down below. And if you are still interested in a tech career, check out the DevOps roadmap. I'll put a link to it down below. And it's kind of this unique way of looking at the whole tech ecosystem, right? Because there's so much to learn when you're just getting started. And so I built this roadmap that lets you pick an area that you like or that you have some familiarity with, explore it. And then when you're done exploring it, it shows you how it ties in to all the different areas of the DevOps lifecycle and the overall software application environment that we work in. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.